Today in our 2007 Toyota Tundra, we'll be installing the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWG-NRK1257-5W. This 5th Wheel Installation Kit is designed to let you install your B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. The adapters are part numbers BWRVK3500 or part number BWRVK3400. The underbed design of the kit allows for full truck bed access and when you're ready it's under 5 minutes to convert your empty truck bed into a fifth wheel hitch. We'll start off by unlocking our B&W hitch and installing our fifth wheel adapter. We have ours pre-assembled but you can adjust the uprights here depending on your truck and trailer combination. At this point, the hitch is ready to attach to a trailer. There's a little clip here that you can release. Basically, it's a safety pin. Then you swing the handle out and you watch the jaws open. You're ready to back onto your trailer. Once you're secure onto your trailer, you can reinstall the clip. And since this fifth wheel installation kit doubles as a gooseneck hitch, when you're not towing your fifth wheel, you can remove it. This frees up the hole to reinsert the hitch ball when you need it. Now we'll go ahead and show you how to install the custom underbed kit for the BMW Companion 5th wheel trailer hitches. All right, here's where our kit comes with. We have our two frame brackets here. We have our rails that our turnover ball gooseneck will mount to. We have a plug here, which will slide inside of our gooseneck adapter when our ball is not in use, just so you can have a flat surface on your truck bed. Now this plug that we have here, it's not actually a plastic plug. It is a fully metal plug, as you can see here with the weld on the side. It's very durable, very thick. It'll last us a very long time. We have our two and five sixteenths gooseneck ball right here, which will slide down in here like so. We have our safety chain loop hardware bag right here to attach your safety chains with your trailer onto. Then we have a large bag of installation hardware to attach all of this to our truck. First thing we need to do is drill our hole for our gooseneck ball to stick through. Now, since this truck has a drop-in bed liner here, it makes it a little bit more difficult to figure out where the center line of our bed is. So we'll take a measurement here from the inside edge of the bed to the other edge. And we're looking about 60 and a quarter inches. So we'll make a mark on half of that, just right there. And we'll lift up on our bed liner and see where that mark comes in. And as you can see, right here our mark is about in center of the ribs in our bed here. So that means we're gonna be actually centered on our bed as well as centered on our bed liner. We'll measure back the distance that's specified in the instructions. And we'll make another mark here, and we'll drill out our pilot hole. All right, with our pilot hole drilled, we switched out to our four inch hole saw. We'll insert our bit into the pilot hole we drilled, and we'll make our hole. All right, now you can see our hole underneath the bed. You can see how it's nice and centered in our truck bed and right above our center of our rear differential right here. Now we will remove the heat shield. This will not be reinstalled. Now there's a fuel pump driver module located inside of the frame right here. There's two 12 millimeter nuts that hold it in place. We'll remove these nuts. I'll set these nuts aside. Now on the passenger side of the frame, there's a wiring clip right here. We need to pop this off the frame. Just like so. We can push it down here and set it aside. Now on our fuel vapor canister here, there's a bracket here. We need to remove that. And I'll slide this bracket on down like so and hang it out of the way for the time being. Now this rubber exhaust hanger here, just on the back section of our tailpipe, we need to slide this off. First we'll spray it down with some lubricant so it comes off easier. 
Now we'll use a pry bar and we'll slide it off. Now we'll take one of our channel cross members here, making sure that this notch here will face towards the front of the truck and our channels facing down like so. We'll slide it over the top of our frame, underneath our bed, like so. We'll come on the other side and pull it on through. And then it'll rotate down like that. Now we'll take our flat section here for our rail and we'll install it in the same manner, making sure it's gonna go against the flat side of our angle piece. Go up on the other side and pull it in. And we'll slide both of these towards the back. Okay, with those like that, we can now get our front section in. Now we'll slide our other angle piece with the angles facing down and this part facing towards the rear. And this will be our front rail. Go on the other side and pull it on through. Take our final flat rail and get it into position. Okay. Now we'll take four of our half inch by two inch long carriage bolts here and we'll install them through the four center holes in our front rail. And we'll make sure our rails are lined up and the bolts go through both of them. Now we'll take our center section here, making sure our pin here will be on the driver's side. We'll have ourselves a lock washer, a flat washer, and a nut. We'll raise this into position and install our hardware on the front rail. So we'll take a flat washer here, a lock washer, and a nut. Just get it started. We'll come back and do the other three. We don't need to tighten these fully, just get them started so it'll help support the weight. Now we'll do our rear bolts in the same manner. Here's our driver's side frame bracket. You can tell it's a driver's side because it has the two holes here for relocating our fuel pump control module. We'll take one of these large bolts here, put a flat washer on it, and then one of the quarter inch thick frame spacers on it. And we'll bolt this into position on our driver's side frame reel. Now we're placing it, we need to make sure the bottom edge goes inside our frame. just like that. Make sure all the frame is cleared out of dirt and debris. You can see how the spacer here is gonna sit inside our frame like so. We'll stick it inside our frame like that. Install our lock washer and then thread on our nut. And we'll get the top bolt in. This one we'll get our small eighth inch thick spacer, like so. Once we have it pushed in the frame, we'll install our lock washer and then install our nut. In order to get the nut on, you have to pull the bolt down a little bit, center the nut over the bolt, and then tighten it up a little bit. You may need a second pair of hands to hold the nut in place for you while you do this. 
Okay, now that we have both of our bolts started and our spacers in the frame properly, we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. Okay, we're gonna slide our passenger side bracket in. We're gonna sandwich this wire here into our C channel of our frame bracket and that'll hold it in place. This is the same one we unclipped from the top of the frame earlier. Now we need to grab our tailpipe section here and pull it towards the center of the vehicle in order to get room to get it in. Okay, with our bracket in place, we put our hardware in the bottom just like we did on the other side. Now we'll get our top bolt started. Have our assistant put her lock washer on and her nut. And I'll push up on her bolt, make sure her spacer plate goes in the frame properly. There we go. And we'll tighten up the nut. With our frame brackets in place, we can now install our carriage bolts that will attach our rails to the frame brackets. Remember we do our flat washer on the back and a lock washer and a nut. Same on the front rail. Okay, now we have all of our hardware in place. With all of our hardware in place, we'll start tightening the eight bolts that hold our cross rails to our center section. Now we'll torque these to the amount specified in the instructions, doing the eight that hold the center section in first. These two right here are made a little bit more difficult because the spring here for our ball release is in the way. I'm gonna do this one by hand, just get it as tight as you possibly can. Same with this one. Okay, good. All right, with our eight bolts tightened down and torqued to spec, We'll tighten the outer two that holds our rails to our frame bracket here. We can now torque our frame brackets down. We'll put a wrench inside the frame to hold the nut in place. And then we'll come in with a torque wrench on the bolt. Now when you do this, you want to make sure your spacer plate that went inside the frame is fully seated. You don't want to damage it. All right. Okay, we have an assistant holding our wrench in place from the outside. We'll torque our bolt down now. And we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. Now we'll take our ball release handle here and we'll slide it in through the driver's side, through this hole, and up on top the tab inside. With it in this position, we can go underneath and install our hardware. We'll take the small carriage bolt here, install it on the handle, like so. We may need to pull the pin out and angle it on down into that position to gain some room to get the bolt in. Make sure you watch your fingers. You don't want to accidentally release the pin and get smacked by the handle springing back. We'll take the flange nut here and install it. Now we'll tighten it down. Now we can grab our handle and pull it, push our pin back in, just like so. Now we can reattach 
our fuel pump driver assembly to the frame of the vehicle. Now, BMW was considerate enough if you're going to equip your vehicle with air springs or airbag suspension in the back of it, they made it so you could reattach the module right here on the driver's side frame bracket just so you have room for the airbags and your gooseneck hitch at the same time. So we'll slide it back up into the frame rail. And we'll reinstall the two nuts that we removed earlier. And we'll tighten these for 12 millimeter again. Now our wiring harness bracket on the back of our charcoal can canister used to go here, but now if our middle section of our gooseneck in place, it won't clear anymore. BNW provides us with this bracket here to space it out away from our frame. So we'll install that on there, put the original 12 millimeter nut back on. We can tighten that down with the ratcheting wrench. You have to have the bracket slightly loose in order to install the carriage bolt. We'll get the carriage bolt in, like so. Then we'll tighten our bracket down all the way. Then we'll take our wire bracket here, slide it back over like so. Take the nut. Screw it on there. Now we'll tighten down the nut all the way. Make sure there's plenty of slack in our wires, which there is, so we're good. I'm gonna take this exhaust hanger off for the time being. Some trucks this step may not be necessary, but in our case it is because our exhaust is really close to our gooseneck right here. This spacer here that's included, which we can install in the hanger, will help lower the exhaust down, down some. So you don't have to listen to it banging into your hitch. So you slide it on like this and the bottom slot, rotate it on through, just like so. And then we'll be having our exhaust slide through this hole and it'll push it on down. We'll slide it onto our bracket like so and then we'll get it on the other two studs that hang down and push it back on. Just like so. Okay, now we can drill the holes for our four safety chain holes. You make a pilot hole first. Now we can enlarge our holes that we drilled to a half inch diameter. And for that, I'm gonna use a step bit. If you want, you can just use a half inch drill bit too. Okay, now we need to come in from the top and go down for drill bit two, just because the bed liner here didn't get drilled out all the way. All right, so we'll drop these down and then we'll go underneath and install our hardware. Now we'll take one of our springs, install it on the U-bolt, put the small end facing towards the end of the U-bolt, put a nut on it. Do the same for the other one. And we'll do the same for the other U-bolt. Okay, with all the hardware started, we'll tighten the nuts until they're flush with the end of the U-bolt. All right, so we use a three quarter inch socket. We'll tighten these down a little bit. That one's flush now. And flush.
And that completes our installation of the BMW Custom Underbed Installation Kit for BMW Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWGNRK1257-5W on our 2007 Toyota Tundra. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.